to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend a few minutes with the staff at Cook Library. I'm Lindsay Barber Petticourt, and I'm here today with Ellen, one of our readers' advisors. We're here to introduce Ellen as one of our bookies, a new books, movies, and music recommendation resource here at Cook Memorial. So let's find out more about Ellen and why you might want to ask her for a recommendation or two. Hi, Ellen. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for having me. Oh, um, so let's start by um, just talking about what you like to read. Um, what are some book genres that you are drawn to? It might be easier to list the ones I don't read. Okay. I'll tell you the ones I do read. Uh-huh. I read, I like literary fiction. Mm-hmm. I like some mysteries. I like science fiction. I like thrillers. I like histor- historical fiction. And YA, some YA. Okay. So, yeah, that covers... I don't like Westerns. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> or romance. So okay. Much. Yeah, that still covers a lot of the uh, genres that we have here in the library. Mm-hmm. Um, why do you keep um, coming back to the genres that you do like? Is there anything in particular that really has to grab you, a book has to have to kind of grab you? What I like the most are books with great characters. Mm-hmm. Books whose characters I feel like when I'm done, I I know who they are. And p- people, they feel like people that I've gotten to know. Okay. And I like books that take me places where I've either I've been before or I may never get to and would like to learn more about. Okay. Or And also during historical periods that I didn't live through because I think one of the best ways to learn about history is... And um, through is through historical fiction, right? I think that's that's also a really good way to see it through somebody else's eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so you can find those um, bits throughout lots of genres. Right. So I understand right. why you're drawn to so many. Um, right, and some people, are, you know, Anne Boleyn and Henry the Eighth are, are fascinating characters, and mm-hmm. um, and there's so many ways you could come at their lives and their stories. Right, and so many authors have right. Um, and and then if you read different books by different authors about the same character, you get a different view of, of who that person is from different perspectives. Because it's hard, especially with some of the major historical characters, they're such complex, interesting people. And there's so many facets to their personality and their lives you can look at that you can't just do it all in one book. Right, right, yeah. I'm also interested in, I grew up in a small town in Mm -hmm. Iowa, and I'm always interested in books set in small towns. Really? Because I think some people have idealistic ideas about what small towns are like. Yes, they do. (laughs) I grew up up in a small town as well, so I know exactly what you mean. (laughs) But they're they're not all, you know, wonderful places. There's there's dark things that happen, and there's, you know, but there's good people. And and I like the idea of things... I feel comfortable in a book that's set in a small town because it kind of reminds me of what it was like growing up in a small town. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And the sort of characters who might have small lives, but that doesn't mean they're not interesting people. Right. They're not the, you know, Henry VIII, they're not the big people on the screen in the in history, but they're interesting in and of themselves. Right, yeah. Small towns are still filled with people. Right. Regardless. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> interesting. Some of, the, some of the more interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> we could probably talk about living in a small town for we the could. rest of the podcast, but, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more. Yes. Um, so we talked about reading multiple um, books by the same author. Um, what are some of your um, favorite authors, authors that you keep going back to? Um. <sighs> I was looking back at a list that I made maybe 10 years ago of my favorite authors and realized they're very different than the ones I think of as my favorite authors today. Uh My favorite author right now is probably Elizabeth Strout. Um, She wrote My Name is Lucy Barton and Anything is Possible, and they are companion books. My Name is Lucy Barton introduces a new character, Lucy Barton, who's grown up in a small town in Illinois, and she's... Re- getting reacquainted with her mother in a hospital room after some years that we don't really quite know why of estrangement. And it's kind of awkward. And it it was an uncomfortable book to read, but mm-hmm. I thought it was good. Now, the next one, Anything is Possible, is about Lucy Barton. and But Lucy Barton isn't... A, 
She's a character in the book, but she only is being seen through other people's eyes. So you see, it's as if you're walking through the little town in Illinois where she grew up, talking to, walking in and out of the stores and the houses and talking to the people who knew Lucy Barton and remember her as a school child who stayed after school to read because it was so horrible at home. Mm-hmm. Or... Um, the, the neighbor who knew what was going on in the family and tried to help out the family because there was abuse going on. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's just this beautiful, char- altogether character study of this person, Lucy Barton, who's managed to leave this town and go to New York and become a writer. Okay. But it's, the writing is amazing. Yeah. And, and I really love the way she talks about characters. Okay. And the other one that I love is um, Olive Kitteridge. Yes. Which is a, another story in which all of, it's almost like connected short stories in which Olive Kitteridge might show up in one of the stories. She might all just walk through another one of the mm-hmm. stories. She might be featured in one of the stories. And she's, to some people, she's scary because she's a retired math teacher and those people who had her are afraid <laughs> of her. But you, And you see what her new mother, daughter-in-law thinks of her and you think what she, you realize what she thinks of her son and the new daughter-in-law and you realize you just realize the depth of her emotions and how people just don't understand her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that book I um it's still very much on my on my to read list because I think a lot of the people who have read it just loved it so much um are there any other authors that have that um, you're still drawn to, or I, you're newly drawn to. I like Louise Penny, mm-hmm. and I didn't think I was a mystery reader much until I started reading her books. Oh, okay, and, and again, it's not so much the mystery. There is a murder that happens in this little town in Canada in every book, mm-hmm. but it happens off screen, and it just sort of, and all the people in the town are what's interesting about it because all of them, there's a. There's a poet laureate, retired poet laureate, who's got a potty mouth and a pet duck, <laughs> who swears also. There's a gay couple who run a bistro. There's um, Armand Gamache, who's a retired detective in the Canadian murder squad, uh-huh. whatever it's called. And, and, <laughs> and he comes in, and he, he's just this character who seems to come around come across as knowing everything that's good and solves the problems in in ways that are reasonable and make sense and mm-hmm. I think I'm a little bit in love with him <laughs> a little bit I I don't know how to describe it but I do like everything that Louise Penny's written mm-hmm. and Stephen King he's okay. written some great books recently the Mr. Mercedes trilogy was brilliant mm-hmm. I, I think he's a really amazing writer mm-hmm. and very perceptive about human nature and writes great characters and amazing stories. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily read the books he wrote in the 80s because even he says he was drunk and under the influence. Right. Early career Stephen King and then later career right. Stephen King are just, uh, they're, I think, the epitome of just great fiction. It Absolutely. It doesn't necessarily matter if it's um, horror, which not all of it is. Mm-mm. No, Mr. Um, Mercedes, I wouldn't say is horror. Right, right. But no, he's just, he's a great writer. Yeah. I love his stuff. I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and another one my, that I've read, my all time, one of my all time favorite books I have to say is Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger. Okay. It's a coming of age story set in small town Minnesota mm-hmm. of a little boy whose sister has died and everybody says she's committed suicide, but he's pretty sure she probably didn't jump off the bridge. Mm-hmm. So he, sets upon, takes upon itself to go investigate. Okay. And finds some of the ugly, darker parts in this small town, which okay. is part of what I love about small town stories. Right, right. Um, it kind of defies the stereotype right. about what we think small towns mm-hmm. are. Innocent. Not, yes. Not so much. Right, right. Uh, so you actually select for the young adult collection here in the library. Are there any recent young adult titles that stand out to you that you would like to recommend? The one I most recently read and I can't get out of my mind is a book called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is her first book, and it's a story of a young African-American woman who lives in a not-so-good part of town but whose parents have done everything they can do to educate her by sending her to a prep school in a 
nicer suburb. Mm -hmm. In other words, read white suburb. Mm -hmm. So she's she straddles both worlds. In during the day, she's goes to a prep school and wears a uniform and is very popular mar partly, and she knows partly because she's black and she's cool. But then she just goes back to the neighborhood where her dad runs a store, and it's it's I guess you'd call it a ghetto. But in the store, she's just her father's daughter, and she helps out, and she doesn't have the cool factor that she has in the suburbs. So she straddles both worlds. And the what happens is one of her best friends in her presence is shot and killed mm -hmm. by a white cop. So you see this from her point of view, and you see her friends, her white friends come try to understand this. You see her neighborhood and her friends in the neighborhood try to understand this. Mm -hmm. And she's sort of the as a witness, she's kind of the centerpiece of the trial that happens. And she's pulled and pushed in all different directions. Mm -hmm. And it, for all the things that are going on in the news today, I think it, it shines a light and makes very accessible to anybody who's not necessarily familiar with life in the inner city. It makes them understand more than an article in the newspaper or a newscast of crying you know, relatives on the street. This right. gives an image and or a picture. It humanizes right. this sort of story for anybody. I think who's who's trying to understand what's going on in the world right now. Right. That's one of my favorite things that fiction can yeah. do. Mm -hmm. uh, it can really put you in somebody else's shoes. Right. Something that you're not going to get from right. it, from it, watching the news or even reading the news. No. Um, it gives you it gives you an empathy. Yes. It, it allows you to look at something from somebody else's point of view in a way that you cannot from just a news story. Right. Right. Um I I have also read The Hate You Give and I agree it is a very good book. Um All right. Anything else you'd like to add? I um if I love coming or coming to work, and if somebody comes and asks me for something good to read, I'm very excited. Oh, good. Um, and I try to ask some questions about what sort of things they might be in the mood for and what things they've read before. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that's the best part about my job is matching the right person with the right book. Yes. And then somebody comes back and says, oh, that book was good. Do you have more? That just makes me. I, I, I would understand. Almost do it for free. <laughs> there are days. Yes. Well then. Well then. Come into the library yeah. and make make Ellen's day by asking her for a book recommendation. Please. Um, and if you if you can't make it in, um, we do also have our online form that you can you can fill out. You won't get to see Ellen's excitement in person, um, but I I guarantee she'll. She'll send you an email with, with just as much enthusiasm as if you had asked it in person. Um, all right. So thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, Ellen. Thanks for having me. So if you did want a um, book recommendation from Ellen or maybe a movie or music recommendation, um, visit our site at cooklib.org slash bookies and fill out a form. While on our website, don't forget to also visit Shelf Life, the library's blog where we share what's new and interesting in books, movies, and music. Our blog can be found at shelflife.cooklib.org. If you want to get in touch and leave some feedback, send a message to us at webmaster at cooklib.org. Did you enjoy this podcast? If so, we'd appreciate it if you could spread the word and leave us a rating on iTunes. We'll be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening.